Hello everyone, uh, this video explains how to get started with an Adaptronic Modular ECU. This assumes that you either have a plug-in ECU or that you have a base map for your engine that's already wired up. The steps I'll cover in this video are what you get in the box, basic installation, software installation, basic configuration, basic tuning and where to get more information. So first of all, what you get in the box. Let's open up a box of a typical plug-in ECU and we'll see what we get. So the first thing is a vacuum hose. Um, Adaptronic ECUs um, don't currently support airflow sensors because on modified cars people tend to remove them anyway. So uh, we use MAP to tune the engine. So the hose needs to connect to the manifold pressure at one end and the MAP port of the ECU at the other end. You also get a quick start guide and a pinout diagram for the ECU. On a plug-in ECU, this shows you the um, picture of the factory connector and all the pins and what they connect to inside the ECU. So if you want to add any sensors or anything like that, then that's the diagram you can follow. Uh, you also have a USB cable um, to connect your laptop to the ECU. It's normal uh, mini B to A type cable, so if you ever lose one, you can just go and get one from a local shop. There's also a USB stick which has the software on it, uh, but you can always download the latest one from the website as well. Uh, there's other things like a keyring and some stickers. And of course, the ECU itself. So the plug-in ECU has got two internal map sensors. Um, they're functionally the same, they're both um, four bar map sensors, but by convention we use this one for map and this one is an auxiliary one. So you can use this for um, measuring the pressure after the turbocharger, but for the intercooler, if you want to measure the pressure drop, that sort of thing. On the front of the ECU we have the connector door and behind that, we have the USB connection, as well as four serial ports um, and a headphone jack for listening to the knock sensor during tuning. At the other end of the ECU, we have the vehicle connector which plugs into the vehicle loom in a factory installation. Mount the ECU near the factory ECU location, making sure that you can get to the USB connection and also run the map hose through the firewall and plug the ECU into the factory loom. If that's all you're doing, then that step's complete. But at this point you may choose to do some other points and I'll describe some of those common ones here. A very common one to add is an air temperature sensor. So some math sensored cars don't have an air temperature sensor from the factory. For example, the GTST and the GTT Skylines. So if you're installing a plug-in ECU on a Skyline, except for the GTR, we would recommend adding an air temperature sensor. This should be wired up to the ECU in the factory location and you can check the pinout sheet to find the appropriate pin to do this. Another common upgrade is to replace the factory boost control solenoid with a three or a four port MAC valve. In these cases you just reuse the wires in the engine bay that connect to the factory boost valve so you don't need to make any wiring changes at the ECU end. Another common upgrade is to replace the factory boost control valve with a three or a four port MAC valve. In these cases you'd normally just reuse the wires in the engine bay that connect to the factory boost control valve so you don't need to make any wiring changes at the ECU. Another upgrade that's less common is to add a flex fuel sensor. This gives the ECU the ethanol percentage and also the fuel temperature over a single wire connection to the ECU. The sensor requires 12 volt power and ground and this can be sourced from the factory ignition switched power source and a power ground. The signal output needs to be connected to an input called CAS3 which can be used for a flex fuel sensor and again this pin is shown on the pinout diagram. If you're adding any other sorts of sensors, such as oil or fuel pressure sensors, this again would be the ideal time to do so. Again, the signal pins are shown on the pinout diagram, and the 5 volts and the sensor ground can be taken back to the ECU pins or from the throttle position sensor. If you lose this piece of paper, don't worry because you can see all this pinout information in the software as well, and it's also on the website. Alright, now it's time to get, open up the laptop. Now if you haven't already, you'll need to install the Eugene software. You can either get it off the USB stick that comes provided with the ECU, or you can get it from the Adoptronic website. Once the software is installed, it has an updater program which will check the website for updates and download them as they become available. So once the software is installed, you can run it and plug in the ECU. So I'm just going to get my USB cable. Plug the ECU like this. Now, Eugene will connect to the ECU and then read out all the settings. Now if you want you can start from here which is the base map that gets led into the ECU when it's manufactured or you can start off with your own base map and work from there. 
Note that some ECUs have multiple base maps available, so it's very important that you start with the correct base map. For example, the Skyline R32, R33 ECU has the RB25 and the RB26 maps, which are quite different. And the SR20 has the S13 and the S15 maps, which have completely different pinouts. So it's essential that you load in the correct base map before you power up the ECU. Let's go through the configuration of an ECU in Eugene. First of all, the software uses a ribbon type system to segregate the settings. The home ribbon gives you the buttons to load and save files and also unit selection. If it's the first time using Eugene, you should probably set up the units to how you like them. The next section, the home ribbon, has some diagnostic tools and software settings, but most importantly, the wiring guide. This shows the pinout of the ECU and also each pin has an area where you can put your own free text in and choose the wire colour. So if you're doing any wiring modifications, you should update these here so that when you come back to look at the car later, these will be recorded in the map. At the right of the ribbon are the logging settings. The most common that I use are the start and stop logging and the log playback functions. These log data directly to the PC. There's internal logging functions in the ECU as well, but I won't describe that in this video. The next tab on the ribbon is inputs, and if we've changed anything in the wiring, this is where we need to configure it. The engine details are also in this section, so for example if you've changed the engine capacity, this is where you change that setting. If you've added oil or fuel pressure sensors, then you should go to liquid pressure sensors and configure them there. If you've added an ethanol sensor, that should be configured under ethanol, and if you've added a wideband sensor, sensor this should go under O2 lander sensors. If you've added a flex fuel sensor, then you should also go to the temperature inputs fuel temp sensor and select the sensor type as being from flex fuel sensor. The next tab is outputs. The setting you're most likely to change here is the injector type. If you go to this page and hit the search button, then you can type in the injector part number, or the name, or the car, and Eugene will search for it for you. If this injector is already characterised and in our database, then you'll see it in the list together with the picture of the injector. If not, then you'll need to leave the type as custom and then enter the injector data manually. Make sure you save this ECU configuration file before you go any further. Now it's time to turn on the ignition power and check that the sensors are reading correctly. You can go to a page, for example the fuel map, and hit the monitor tab at the top right. Some default gauges will appear, but you can add your own by right clicking and searching for the channel that you want to add. If you hit the F2 key, then you'll have a floating window with all the available gauge channels visible, which is sometimes handy. Once you've checked that the temperature inputs give sensible values, the next step should be to calibrate the throttle position sensor. Go back to the inputs tab and throttle position sensor in the ribbon. Leave the pedal up and then click the learn current voltage at the TPS 1 0% setting. Then push the pedal to the floor and click the learn current voltage at the TPS 100% setting. Then verify that the TPS overall channel moves smoothly from 0 to 100% as you push the pedal. Next, start the engine. If the injector data is correct, then the engine should be pretty close in terms of being able to run by itself. If necessary, you can adjust the fuel map, hold the throttle open a bit to keep it running and so on. Now before going any further, you should check the ignition timing. The timing lock function is found in the inputs triggering part of the ribbon. Timing lock brackets normal is the normal timing lock function where it's locked at an angle that you specify. For example, if you put in 10 degrees, then you'll see that on the ignition timing display, and that's what should be at the engine. Then you can adjust the trigger base angle to get the timing to be correct. The rotary mode is special and that locks the leading plugs at 5 degrees after top dead centre and the trailing at 20 degrees after top dead centre. Different rotary engines have either of these or both of these angles available as references on the timing cover. Make sure that you put the ignition time back to normal mode before you go any further. The Adaptronic modular ECUs use a volumetric efficiency tuning model where you tune the volumetric efficiency of the engine and the ECU calculates the amount of fuel to deliver based on the engine capacity, manifold pressure, temperatures and target air fuel ratio. If you have a staged injection engine, the staging is seamless so that you don't need to worry about that. You just need to put the correct numbers in the VE table to get to the target AFR. My suggestion is to tune in open loop mode and then use the map trace button which is the T key. This highlights the cells which you visit and also shows the colour change depending on whether it was too rich or too lean at that point. And if you move the cursor over that cell, the software will tell you the lambda or AFR actually was relative to the target and how much correction to apply. You can also apply this correction automatically by selecting the range and pressing R. These keyboard shortcuts can be found by clicking the right mouse button on the map. Other people prefer to tune in closed loop mode, 
or to use the adaptive fuel tuning function in the ECU, and whatever workflow works for you is what you do. Maps for other functions can be found in the ribbon depending on whether it's a fuel tuning, ignition tuning, or an air tuning function. So air tuning includes um, boost, idle control, electronic throttle, and variable valve timing. Now if you want to log what's going on, the easiest way is the PC-based logging. So just hit the Start Logging button at the toolbar, or Control L, and then choose where to save the log. Eugene is now logging, and you can see this in the status bar at the bottom left of the screen. When you have finished the thing that you want to log, then just hit Control K to stop the log or hit the Stop Logging button. The log saves a lot of data from the ECU, far more than you can see on the screen at once, and also the map within the ECU when the log was taken. So if you need someone to look at the file, then if you just send them the ALG binary file, then that contains all the information that they need. There are also plenty of other videos where I go into fuel tuning, boost control, idle control and so on in more depth. So if you want to learn more, hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. Thank you very much.